Hey guys, Dilla here, MinimalistSurvival.com. Today I'm going to show you how to build a double walled aluminum can, pop can, beer can, alcohol stove. This is a great version of a tried and true classic, works great. Um, double walled, builds pressure, um, really great design. Um, yeah, here's all the tools you're going to need uh, ruler, sharpie, stapler, thumbtack, pair of scissors, and a uh, utility knife. Great little stove, super lightweight, weighs into about 12 grams, doesn't weigh a thing, very inexpensive to make, costs you about 10 cents, and uh, really, really durable little little stove, so you really can't go wrong. Um, so yeah, let's get started. First thing you're going to need to do is to take your utility knife and cut the bottom out of one of the cans. Um, what you're going to basically do is you're going to ride this crease right here right along there and just kind of go around it three or four times and then the can will pop right off it looks something like this you'll be able to pop it push the bottom clean out we'll take that and just kind of discard it and you'll end up with a product that's pretty close to this if you want to you can sand that down usually it's not too bad not too sharp or anything so I've uh, yet to have one cut me so not much to worry about um, in the Utility knife is definitely the best tool for that job. Once you have the bottom cut out of one can, you want to pick something of a known height that you want to make for this. I just use this stack of coasters and just kind of lay your sharpie down and go around, go around the can. I've already done this one, and then you'll do the second can so they're of equal of equal height. And then what you're going to want to do after you have your known height, you're going to want to take that height and add about a quarter inch to make up for the space for this bottom ring for your inner ring. I use a ruler, tape, measure whatever you want, measure the height of your stove, and then take one of your cans and make your markings up about midway, adding about a quarter of an inch height to the height of your overall stove there. Once your marks are made and your bottom's cut, you'll take your scissors and you'll just cut the bottom off right on your line. You'll definitely want to consider rinsing these cans out before you start, otherwise you'll have pop or beer or whatever all over you by the time you're done. Once you get the bottom cut off of your first can, take your other can and use it to kind of stretch it open. And you want this to be the bottom can that you're doing this to, the bottom part of your stove. And what that's going to do is it's going to pre-stretch the aluminum so it's easier to insert the top end of the stove when you put the two pieces together. Just kind of give it a little, give it a little love and have it stretch out a little bit. Pre-stretched, ready to go. And then being mindful of your markings, you're going to need this piece here, this strip out of the middle. So be careful when you're cutting this piece out not to damage that uh, intersection of this can. You're going to want to use it, so you're going to want it in pretty good shape. Go ahead and cut your second can. The one with the hole is going to be the top of your stove. So there you have the bottom of your stove and then the top of your stove. And then at the point that you've made your, your two marks there, you're going to cut 
along the line that you've, if you have a line on the can, great. That's why I prefer to use these cans. They're really easy to, to kind of map out. If you need to make a vertical line before you do this, this is going to help your next step very, very much. So you'll cut up that vertical line. And because you've made your markings across that line, you'll now have marks on either end, which makes it very easy to cut this next piece out. Okay, so now I have marks here and here. I'll take my ruler and I'm just going to trace those lines. And remember we added about a quarter of an inch to the width of this strip over the height of your stove. And then we'll cut that strip out. And what you're going to want to do is you want to take your middle piece here. You're going to want to kind of coil it up and fit it inside to this ring, like so. Get it to about the right size, and then you're going to put a couple staples in it. I usually staple from the inside. That makes a nice smooth lines on the inside, nothing to catch on anything, like so, you'll end up with something that looks like that. Should fit nice and cleanly right into that inner ring at the base of your can and your stove. Then you want to cut a couple notches opposite of each other in this to let the, to let the fuel through. So what you'll do is, on opposite ends, you'll just cut a couple little notches. It looks something like that. Now placing it with the notches down into the base of the stove, you're going to put your interior piece in like so. And then you're going to take the top of the stove and place it inside the base piece, trying not to wrinkle it as much as possible. Once you get a rough fit, you can kind of reach through here and you can press the wrinkles out and try to get everything kind of lined up, get everything kind of how you like it. And then very carefully, you'll press the top into the bottom, being sure to keep your inner ring lined up with both the top and the bottom so it fits snugly into that little recessed section top and bottom. And you want to do it equally around the perimeter of the stove, evenly.
like so. Once you get your top and your bottom pieces pressed together, then what you're going to do is you're going to take your thumbtack and you're going to just poke holes in the top opposite each other. I usually do about 16 of them. I find it easiest when you do it opposite because then you can just split it in half. Then you can half those. So you've quartered it. And just keep splitting the difference all the way around until you end up with your with your whole pattern that you like. I find for me about 16 works best. This stove can be used alone. You can use whatever you might have around for windscreens or pot stands or whatever. You can use it in conjunction with, you know, pot stands like so, windscreens that you might have made, whatever you might have. Or you can just pack it and go uh, ultralight and just take the stove itself and use whatever you might find in your environment. Um, so there you have it. Great little stove. Really quick, easy, very inexpensive to make. Um, tried and true design. Very successful. Hope you guys enjoyed my video. Thanks for watching. Jay Dilla, MinimalistSurvival.com.